Welcome back. As Democrats weigh their accomplishments of 2021 and their disappointments, they're obviously looking ahead to what it all means for 2022, and control of Congress is up for grabs, along with a whole bunch of governor's mansions. With an eye on winning as many of those governor's races as Democrats can, the new head of the Democratic Governors Association is urging Democratic candidates to focus more on kitchen table issues, building on the party's accomplishments, rather than focusing their message on the former president. He told reporters, quote, if we talk about the policies that we are implementing and the good things that we are doing, then we don't really need to, quote, talk about Trump. Now, a lot is riding on this Democratic Party's midterm message, especially in these governor's races, because who wins those contests could have major implications for how elections and a whole bunch of presidential contests are administered in 2024. Governor Roy Cooper, the new head of the Democratic Governors Association, joins me now. Governor Cooper, it's been a long time. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Chuck. I think you moderated one of my gubernatorial I, debates. Thanks for doing I, that. I, I, I think so. A couple cycles back, if, if, if memory serves. Let me start with what is going to be the front and center issue for every governor in the next six weeks, whether they like it or not, and perhaps for the rest of 22, and that is, and that is COVID. And that is, I, I feel as if this is a, uh, that governors are trying to be responsive to the exhaustion, and at the same time, they still have to do what's right for the population as a whole. Um, do you think, do you think you're getting enough support from the Biden administration, for instance, on pushing the need for vaccine, pushing mandates and things like that? Or do you think it is better for the governors to make these decisions? It is like night and day from the Trump administration to the Biden administration in getting support on fighting COVID-19. Uh, we governors are the ones who had to step up into the breach. When the Trump administration failed to lead we stepped up and got together and got our own PPE and did the things that we needed to do, put in the restrictions we needed to do to protect the health and safety of our people. The Biden administration has come in, has helped us in a coordinated way. We talk with them weekly about getting vaccines out there. And it's been now just a little over a year since we started vaccinations. Uh, we have a large portion of our population vaccinated. That's why we're in a different position today than we were a year ago. And I think governors are going to continue to have to lead and be practical about mm -hmm. this. But we've been grateful for the Biden administration and all of the help. They understand this is a serious thing. They understand yeah. that the more people we get vaccinated, the quicker we get on the other side of this pandemic. When a governor like, say, Gretchen Whitmer or Tony Evers, calls you up and says, Governor Cooper, you won North Carolina in a year that Joe Biden lost it and uh, Tom Tillis, a Republican, won it. You were the only Democrat that, that of the major three races that was able to win. What's your answer is to explaining why? Well, Democratic governors right now are saving democracy. And you've got these Democratic governors who have Republican legislatures the governors are the ones uh, protecting voting rights, women's reproductive rights, environmental safeguards. You got to stand up and tell the people that you are going to do those things. I think the people appreciate that. But what Tony Evers and Gretchen Whitmer and Laura Kelly and Janet Mills and Steve Sisolak and all of these Democratic governors have is a record of accomplishment. Uh, they are competent. They have done the job. And that's what sets governors apart from senators. Senators get most of the attention. Yep. Governors get the job done. And I think if they can communicate that to the people, and we're going to help them at the DGA, yeah. they're going to win re-election. We have not lost an incumbent Democratic governor election since 2014. And we don't plan to start and stop now. We're also going to pick up, we believe, we can flip some seats. We have Arizona and Massachusetts and Maryland and now Stacey Abrams running in Georgia. We know that now more than ever, governors are the last mm -hmm. line of defense. We're also the first chance at progress. When you look at this U.S. Supreme Court yeah. and how it's going to pass responsibilities down to the states on protecting personal rights and freedom, governors are going to stand in the way. And that's going to be a positive thing. Uh, there was an interesting um, after action report in Virginia. Uh, pollster Brian Stryker wrote a memo based on some focus groups he did, and he made this point. The number one issue for women right now is the economy. And the number one issue for black voters right now is the economy. And the number one issue for Latino voters is 
you guessed it, the economy. I'm not advocating for Democrats ignoring social issues, but when we think broadly about voters, they actually all want us talking about the economy and doing things to help them out economically. This is a weird economy to run on right now.